Our next speaker will be Dr. Bruce Rhodes with the Department of Geography and Geographic Information. Um, Dr. Rhodes is a professor of Geography and Geographic Information Science at the U of I, where he also holds affiliate appointments at the Department of Geology, Natural Resources and Environmental Sciences, as well as the Civil and Enver Environmental Engineering. Uh, his research focuses on the uh, geomorphology really, geomorphology, geomorpho you're going to get that for me, uh, on rivers and streams, on watershed management, and on stream naturalization and restoration. Uh, we've all heard about the aggressive riverbank erosion occurring along the coal ash impoundments. Uh, tonight, Dr. Rhodes will discuss the impact of the meandering river on bank stabilization. Dr. Rhodes. I know it's getting late and you want to talk, um, so I'll try to get through this quickly. Um, unfortunately, I am going to, since I am a professor, give you a brief lecture. Um, the good news is there won't be a quiz afterwards, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, so where's this pointer at that I need for? Oh, okay, great. Thank you. And, okay. Other one. Other right. Okay, well, yeah, I am a fluvial geomorphologist, um, maybe something you have heard of, maybe not, um, but basically I'm a scientist who studies rivers, pure and simple. Um, so, um, geomorphology, fluvial geomorphology is the science of river dynamics, so how they work, basically, um, and how they change over time through processes of erosion and deposition. And I just wanted to let you know that rivers do come in different types. Um, so not all the rivers are the same. So you may think, well, I never thought about it, but um, maybe some of you have traveled, you've seen some different kinds of rivers uh, in your life. Um, but um, they can come in a variety of different forms. And the middle fork, which is what we're worried about here, is actually a type that we call a meandering river. It winds around um, over the landscape and has a certain set of processes that um, we can generalize and um, use that understanding to inform situations like uh, what's the likelihood that this river might threaten the coal ash. Um, so here's where we get into a little bit of lecturing, a little bit of technical stuff. When, when rivers a uh, curve like this and the water goes through them, um, what happens is the water actually begins to spiral. It actually begins to swirl around as it's moving along the river. Um, the analogy I would give is, although maybe the younger people in here may not know this, but uh, do you remember a slinky? Those things you used to put down the stairs? Take a slinky and stretch it out and the water is really following the coils. It's swirling around as it moves through the river. And as it does that, what happens is the position of the fastest flow, which is what we're seeing at the bottom there, so water's coming into that, that bend in the river, and that dark area in those little cross sections or slices through the river um, are showing where the fastest water is. And what happens is when we get down there to the downstream part of the bend, um, we begin to scour the bed um, because the velocity notice is out against the outer bank there, and it's actually below the surface because of the spiral motion. And the spiral motion is just simply due to centrifugal force acting on the water. Just like if you're in a car and going around a curve, you feel like you're getting pushed toward the outer part of your, uh, your seat. Same thing is happening to the water here. Um, so what happens then is because of this effect, uh, the banks will start to erode at that location. Um, so, and you'll end up getting deposition on the opposite bank. So here we have a little diagram at the top. Uh, we have uh, water going through a bend and the banks moving. And 
were getting this little bar built here that we call Point Bar uh, on the inside of the river. And uh, this is very common. It's, it's actually a natural process that we see in these kinds of rivers. Um, so if we go back to our little diagram here that we were looking at before, the maximum bank erosion, the place you're going to get the most erosion of the banks, in a meandering river is downstream of the bend, apex, the sharpest point in the bend. Uh, that's where you're going to get the bank moving outward uh, over time. Um, so rivers do move. Um, meandering rivers move. Um, so what are some of the lessons that uh, we can come away with then? Well, first off, they naturally erode their banks. This is a natural process. It's not doing anything wrong. It's not misbehaving by eroding its banks. This is just simply part and parcel of how the river works. And through bank erosion, meandering river channels migrate across their floodplains. So I've got this little diagram here of the Mackinac River. Uh, which is one of the most active rivers in Illinois. And the uh, Middle Fork's not as active, but you can see this is from uh, the 1930s up until 2015. That river's been all over the place. And during times of high water, the river uses the floodplain to store the water. So we tend to think, oh, it's out of bank and it's causing flooding big problem, but it's actually a storage area for water, and the floodplain itself consists of stored sediment that the river's transporting. So I put this one in bold, that, this is one I like to tell my students all the time, that a meandering river actually consists of its channel and its floodplain, not just the channel. We like to think of rivers as channels, and oh, there's a floodplain over here, no, those two things are integrally connected. They go together. So the river is the channel in the floodplain. So here we are now looking at the Middle Fork. What about the Middle Fork? Well, here we have a channel. This is actually a LIDAR image. It's a, a topographic scene of where the ash pits are. And we can see that uh, this river is sort of down in this valley and both the floodplain and the channel are down there together. And these ash pits are on that floodplain, sitting on that floodplain. Um, so what I've done here is I've gone back and um, looked at some old aerial imagery of this river. So this is from 1940, and this is before the ash pits were there. Um, and one thing, I was told not to walk away from the microphone, but I'm going to do it. Right there. If you look close, you should be able to see a little curve-like feature. That's an old meander bend. So at one point, the river was over there. How long ago? I can't tell you because... Uh, I haven't studied it, but it was over there. I can guarantee you that. There's the ash pits. So the ash pit, that, that river at one point was where that ash pit is at. Okay, this is the river today, and I've put the channel in purple from 1940 on top of the channel from 2017. So this is a 2017 image. And you can see it's moved, right? And it's moved downstream of ends, which is where we would expect it to move. So the uh, old East Ash Pit is right where we would expect to see a lot of migration. The, Amount of migration there from 1940 is about 100 feet. And over there on the far right, uh, off where the ash pits uh, aren't, um, the, the river's actually moved about 350 feet since 1940. So this river is moving around, and it's also moved there where they're reinforcing uh, the bank um, at the 
new East Ash Pit. Okay, so can the river be stopped from eroding its banks? That's the question here. Can we do this? Over the short term, I would say possibly, but in my experience, I'm not an engineer, I will tell you that, but I have worked with engineers, um, and I've gone out to see a lot of bank erosion control projects. I can say, I think, pretty conclusively that the effectiveness of bank stabilization projects is always uncertain. Um, and you can often control one location, but it may shift the problem to another location because the river will want to move. And I would say that maintenance and, maintenance and monitoring will be necessary over the lifetime of the river threat. What is that? That's, I guess, for everybody here to decide. What is perpetuity? I, I'm, I think geologically, so you know, you'll be doing this a long time. Um, eventually, the river will reoccupy portions of its floodplain containing the ash pits. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. When? I can't tell you. But I don't, I don't care what you do, as human beings, we will not stop this river forever. We will not do it. So. Um, eventually it will rework its floodplain. We may not be here anymore, but it will do it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roach. You answered a lot of my questions and very sobering. Thank you.